Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shift the focus to Cheongnam 3.0 and how it affects you guys starting next term. Uh, so I know a lot of you guys are curious and a lot of you guys are hopefully excited about what's uh, about to change starting next term. Right? You're like, okay, what's changing? You know, what's new? Um, you know, are they seriously using a lowercase o instead of a zero, right? 3.0. Um, <laughs> and, and yes, it is a lowercase o. Um, Please raise your hand if you've been at Cheongnam for uh, more than two years. Three years. Okay, so from the people who've been here for more than three years, like, keep your hands up. If you could take any book <coughs> from any lesson, or any book from any level, not prep it, go in and teach a good class. You could do that. I'm not saying that anyone has done that, of course. But. <laughs> so uh, thank you, and that's mainly because We've been around for so long, we've probably taught every level, right? And uh, from those people, please raise your hand if you guys are wanting new content. And that's exactly what's going to happen with 3.0. What do you guys know? What is the first thing you guys think about when you think Cheongdap 3.0? I guess maybe a big hint is what's sitting in front of you guys? Tablets. Tablets. So you're utilizing tablets in the classroom. How often are we going to utilize it? Okay. Or um, you know, how are we going to utilize it? It's actually, uh, you will see that it will be the main source of delivering Cheongnam 3.0 content. And you guys will definitely see it, how uh, you guys can utilize it in the classroom. Before we begin though, I want to show you just a quick video of what an ideal 3.0 class should look like. <coughs> I think the video will be I think it's already, it's already loaded up. Video remembers? <laughs> <laughs>
just birdie. Okay? We wanted to gauge success on a very small scale before we expand it out. Now, um, next term, we're actually expanding it more. Right? Usually, uh, we've found enough success to expand the level. Okay? Usually, companies will say, you know, let's expand one level, let's expand two levels. Right? But again, we're chunk down, so we're going to go ahead and expand it five levels. Okay, so on the branch level, it is expanding from Terra all the way through Eagles. Uh, this is actually very, very big for us. Okay? And we're able to do this because we've seen that much success at the birdie level. When you guys are, I guess, at your locations, what is, uh, to you guys, a big indicator of your guys' success in the classroom? Numbers, if you think of numbers. Student numbers. Student numbers. Um, and student enrollment rates, that's something that instructors, we can't control, but what is something that we do have some control over? Retention. Uh, retention rate, okay? So for this term up until now, the 3.0 retention rate in the Bray levels has been 95%. This is extremely high. It's actually, um, actually a, a little bit skewed because we actually have more students now than we did before. So even though we have 95 percent uh, retention rate, more students have enrolled since starting 3.0. Um, another one is 13. So what do you guys think this number refers to? Well, yeah, how many branches, right? How many branches are currently running 3.0? Okay. And this is uh, across the main branches. Right? Uh, next term, as you guys can see, there are a lot of people in here, and we still have yet to be the ones in Busan and Daegu. It's expanding to 52 locations all over Korea. This is huge. And you guys are going to be uh, the first ones at the franchise level to deliver this. And assume, I'm assuming uh, most of you guys will be teaching uh, the three-point of class once a month. Next time, right? And the last one I want to go through with is this number. What do you guys think this number refers to? Right? The number of students that we launched at. Okay. So this is currently how many students are enrolled in 3.0. And then starting next term, including Terra through Eagle in our branches and also uh, Birdie at our franchises, it's going to be launched to 5,699 students. So hopefully one more, uh, one more roll and make it even 5,700. But this is a huge number. This is big. And um, this does not include, we're sort of rolling out so that next term, or well, the term after that, you guys will launch at the Terra through Eagle level. The good thing is that we think, or we know that Cheongyang 3.0 will be a definite success, mainly because we've seen successes at our branch. And the good thing is that we've acted sort of as guinea pigs, right? To work out all the bugs, work out all the kinks, so that when you guys launch it, it will be a lot smoother for you guys. And that's what training is going to be about. You guys are going to have the best 3.0 instructors, certified trainers, okay, to walk you through the exact components. Um, things that you guys might encounter in regards to 3.0 and how you can address those components or issues so that when you do launch it, it will just be really, really smooth. Um, so, before we go into the actual program changes, let's look at the changes, uh, how it is right now for 2.0 and how it's going to change for 3.0. Okay. Let's first look at 2.0. Um, the interactive level, so we're looking at the bridge all the way through Albatross Plus. How are the classes split up? What do we teach on day one? Reading, Reading and writing, right? Hopefully, according to the program, right? Uh, what about day two? <laughs> listening and speaking. Okay. So we have reading and writing, listening and speaking. What about the class flow? Let's look at the class flow. Usually, the class flow is fairly similar across these levels, so we usually start off with what first? Uh, a little bit before the skill theory. So, topic preview, and then we have the skill theory, skill training, and then we finish off with the CTP. Okay. And this is all because uh, what do we want to promote in our students? What is our teaching philosophy? Right. Critical thinking, critical learning. And that does not change. Okay. So, we still want to promote uh, critical thinking, critical learning, creative thinking in our students right, with the 3.0 uh, program. What has changed is, um, let me be a little bit careful with my wording here, we're always looking to improve. So if you're looking at the 2.0 program, what are some aspects that we can improve the 2.0 program? First of all, let's look at the reading skills and listening skills. Are they drastically different? 
Oh, they're very similar to each other. Uh, usually lesson one, lesson two, it's always the same thing, topic, main idea, major details. Okay? You got uh, transitions in reading, you got verbal cues in listening. Right? Um, you know, poo poo is exactly the same for reading and listening. So all of these skills, they're very, very similar to each other. So what we've done is for C1, okay, we've divided into what we call C1 and C2. So C1, you guys, on the first day, we'll teach what we call C1 critical learning. And that's the focus of the C1 program. If you look at our philosophy, it's very similar, except we have the added platform. And that's something that we'll discuss later with the CSLP. Because the skills are very, very similar, we have actually combined them, and we're going to teach reading, writing, listening, and speaking skills in the same class. Now, what is one part of your students, I guess, curriculum that you really want to help them on, but you can't? Mainly because they're not there when you want to help them. What's that one component? Online homework. So, especially essay writing, summary writing, topical speaking, all that stuff, we do want to give students assistance, but we really can't. Right? You just have to leave those up to the M tutor. And the tutor. <coughs> As I stated before, we've added writing and speaking components to the C1 class to give them a head start. So you will be brainstorming with the students when they do essay writing, or topical speaking, or summary. You'll be getting them started on the summary, so that when they take that, they do the online homework, they'll have a much easier time doing it. So, just to do um, a brief overview, it's very similar with the 2.0 skill training in the sense that we are focusing on skills, <coughs> and really focusing on understanding the topic for the week. So what's that one component that we have left? The CTP. And what we've done is we've taken the CTP, and as Thomas stated before, we've built a project-based learning class based on that. And that's what we call C2, the creative project. Please raise your hand in your 2.0 classes if you guys have enough time to have students pump out a good CTP and also have time for quality feedback at the end of the class. Very little time. And we still feel that this is a very important part of class, but because we're focused on the skills, which is not a problem, we tend to run out of time. Okay. And uh, raise your hand if you feel that the one or one and a half hours of topic digestion skill training is enough to give students to pump out a quality CPP. And that's, that's another issue. So what we've done is we actually created a whole class based around project uh, <coughs> creation. It's called C2. So one class you're going to be teaching C1 and the other class you'll be teaching C2. Now C2 is actually a two-week class, which means that there are one unit is two lessons. So they will start their project during week one and then they will complete it, come back and complete it during week two. Similar to April, correct? Kind of like that day one, day two, three unit course. Ooh, I gotta be careful on how to answer that question. Um, <laughs> and it's similar in the sense that it's split up into days, and they're continuing their project, but it's completely different. And I will just uh, touch on that when we use our thinking book. Uh, but yes. And they will put a heavy emphasis on media learning. Uh, during your training process, all of this will be made a lot more clear. Uh, this is just to let you guys know how the classes are split up. The approach, the thinking approach for each of these classes, because they're different and the purpose is different, the thinking approach has to be different. For C1, we are utilizing the holistic approach to critical learning. Raise your hand if you've heard of the holistic approach to critical learning. Right, that's exactly how I felt three months ago at the R&D meeting, right? I was at the R&D meeting like, okay, so we've got this great content, and we're going to be utilizing the holistic approach to teach to the students. Then I was like, 
yeah, interesting. That's, that's a really good idea, right? First thing I go, uh, do you want to go back to my office, Google? Holistic. <laughs> I can, like Zen Buddhism? Okay, that's not it. Holistic approach to critical learning. And then when I looked holistic approach to critical reading, this is where I figured out what the holistic approach is and how to utilize it. Let me just give you a brief definition of the holistic approach. It's understanding the parts of the whole and how they relate to each other to form the whole. Yeah, I see a lot of people shaking their heads like, what the heck, right? So uh, the best way is to look at a quick example. Um, I thought really long and hard about the best 3.0 example to show a very simple, uh, I guess, explanation of the holistic approach. And this is probably an example that you guys have never ever used in class. But uh, here's my main idea. Chungnam is great for two reasons. Okay? Uh, first, it has great teachers. Second, it has great students, or great teachers. Right? So, what's uh, my major detail? What's my first major detail? Uh, Chungnam has great teachers. Why is this my first major detail? Right, it supports my main idea. It's, it shows how Chungnam is great. Please raise your hand if this is something that you already do in class. Right? You guys are utilizing the holistic approach. You guys are having them understand what the core details are, but more importantly, how they're related to each other. Now, I know a lot of you guys are using it, but this is the trap that we can fall into. For example, let's say your skill theory is listing transitions. And I'll give you the same example. What justification Will students give you if you say, what's the first major detail? And you say, uh, it has great teachers. And you say, why? What justification might they give you? Good. Right, I see transition first. Okay. Does that show that they understand the relationship between the major detail and the main idea? No. no. Right. So that's sort of one thing that we have to sort of stray away from. Okay. Making sure that they understand the relationship is first and foremost. Any kind of transitions or keywords to confirm that relationship secondary, and that's the holistic approach. So it's a little bit, it's very similar to what we do now, but at the same time, it's very different. And the next one is for C2, we utilize design thinking. Please raise your hand if you guys heard of uh, design thinking. So design thinking is a problem solving strategy. And this is very, very important. Because, uh, as Thomas said before, that CTP now was output based. Okay? But now it's process based. So, what we're doing is we're not saying, okay, hey guys, I want you guys to create a poster. I want you guys to do this. I want you guys to do that. Create a billboard slogan. All right? Make a game show. That's no longer the prompt. The prompt now is, guys, Solve this problem using the design thinking approach. So what we're doing is we're teaching students a problem solving strategy that utilizes critical thinking as well as creative thinking to find the best possible solution. Let me just quickly go over the five steps of design thinking. First of all is empathize. This is something that you guys will all learn uh, throughout your training. But design thinking is really all about empathizing with the end user. Looking at multiple perspectives. So seeing you know, how this, peop uh, this group of people will feel about an issue versus another group. And then once you've gained as much perspective as possible, then it's defined. What's the issue? Now luckily, the uh, issue, because of how the lessons are created, it's usually provided for you guys. So now that you have all this perspective, let's look at the problem. Next one is IDA. So this is where students get really, really creative. You have the perspectives, you have the issue you're trying to solve. Don't think about any limits. Just start generating ideas with your group members. So at this point, students should have lots and lots of great ideas. And then it's materialized or prototype. Okay? Now we consider our limits. Now you look at our choices. Now you look at the limits. And this is 
the uh, favorite part for me as a teacher to go around and start setting those limits down, right? Playing devil's advocate, saying you can't do this because of this. Can you do this? Why? Why not? And then they really just hone in on that one solution, that one best solution. And then the next part is to test it, to present it. And those are the five steps of presenting. So this is a two-week process. We've given a lot of time. CTP was what? How much time do we usually give to CTP? Of course, the program guy, 35 minutes, realistically, 20, 15 minutes, right? <laughs> Your project, go present, good job, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now you have, you know, I want to say six hours. Now you're like, what the heck? That's way too much time. But currently, as it stands right now, it is about just enough time to pump out a quality project. And the best part is that students, they have tabs. They just had them in front of them. So, um, before they just had a book, if they were lucky, colored pencils, markers, pre-scribed board markers, <laughs> even to your students, right? Okay. But now they have a whole tab that they can work with, different apps. They can be very, very creative. So, really, I hope you guys are really excited to learn more about the C1 and C2 programs and how you can utilize it in your class. Let's go over uh, quickly the teaching philosophy. What's our current teaching philosophy? It's very similar to this. Passion for, passion for teaching, compassion for learning, right? Passion for, yep, that's what it is. Okay. But now it's just changed a little bit. Passion for media learning, okay? Compassion for mentee learners. Now let me quickly just explain this. I know a lot of you guys are smiling back over there, like what does this mean? Um, we are going to be relying on the tablet a lot more as a tool to supplement our lessons. We really have to believe in this. We really have to embrace that this is the most effective way to deliver uh, content to the students. So from a teacher's perspective, we really need your guys' buy-in. Now what this allows us to do is it allows us to customize the class even further for each of your students so that then you guys act more as mentors versus just teachers. Uh, let me go ahead and look at the core teaching values for 3.0. Show, don't tell. Please uh, raise your hand if you uh, know about this rule. Creative writing. It's part of creative writing. It's just like, uh, don't explain something to them. Describe it to them. It's basically an inference question. So if it's like, uh, instead of, um, for example, instead of writing Min like Sally, you might want to write, you know, Min's eyes popped out of his eye sockets whenever Sally walked by. Okay. And you're like, okay, so how does Min feel about Sally? He obviously likes her, or he's definitely scared of her, right? One of those. Okay. But that's basically what it is. Now what we have now is we have all this media. We have pictures, videos, web links that we can just show students. What do you think, what do you guys think this would be perfect for? Explaining what to students? Starts with a V. Vocabulary, right? You have all these vocabulary words, boom, 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 you have all these pictures. And you have students to try to match the pictures. Of, and there's actually a, a component based on that. And you guys can utilize this for other components as well. 2575, raise your hand if you guys know what that is. Teach Talk Yep, Teach Talk 25, Student Talk 75. Now, this is something that we should always strive, even in our 2.0 classes. But it's very, very difficult, especially in which classes? Elementary or middle school? Middle <laughs> school classes, right? But again, now we have this tab. For you. As I talked about before, you can customize, right? I found that the best way to reach middle school students is to talk about K pop and celebrities. I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but it was for me. And, like, you know, your millions of girlfriends that you actually don't have. Right. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> uh, anyways, now with the tab, we're able to prep in a way where we can reach each and every student, and that's as much as you want. So it'll be a lot easier to reach those middle school students. It'll be almost effortless to reach the elementary school students. It's almost like keeping them eye, keeping their eyes off the tab is going to be an issue they're going to run to with the elementary students. And the last one is listen, 
and build on it. And this is more for <coughs> our C2, right, where it's very uh, heavy on discussion, where you're going to be bouncing off a lot of ideas from students. Can you listen to their ideas and build on them? Can other students listen to other students' ideas and build on them as well? And those are the three core teacher, uh, teaching guides. And it's all going to be made possible through the use of what we call the CSLP, the Smart Learning, uh, Smart Chung Smart Learning Platform. Sorry. Please raise your hand if you're able to download the CSLP and maybe download a book or two and just navigate through it, just you know, just for the heck of it. Okay. Um, so I know a lot of you guys are like, okay, so how do I use this? We're gonna actually go into uh, a little demonstration afterwards. Let me just show you guys uh, just some benefits of it. So first of all, it's innovative. We are going to be the first private <coughs> academy in, or we have, we are the first private academy in Korea to be offering a smart classroom in terms of how everyone is connected. You're going to be connected to your students, other students will be connected to other students. And that's just an added layer of just the personal connection that you guys already have in your class. It's very, very intuitive. Um, raise your hand if you guys aren't too tech savvy. So. That's okay, because uh, when you guys look for a student you'd be like, what the heck, what am I doing, you know, how do I, how do, I do that? But the more and more you use it, the more and more you realize that you can use this as an effective tool in your classroom. I guess a good analogy is kind of like, you know, Spider-Man, when he gains these two powers, he has no idea how to control them. Okay? But the more and more he uses them, the more and more he gets used to them, right, that's when he just sort of discovers his true power. And that's kind of like this, where you have to see yourself and you're thinking about how am I going to use this, how am I going to use that, and you start thinking, you start using it, the more and more you use it, the more and more you just naturally figure out. And it's uh, very responsive. What this means is it's live, it's real time. When students end input and response, it goes directly to the teacher, it shows up on the TV. Uh, um, you can collect responses from other students, show them all on the TV. Right? You can choose which ones you want to look at. Um, you can disable you know, certain functions for students all on the fly. Attendance all on the fly. And collaborative. Your students can group with each other. They can send each other files. They can send new files. They can work with each other. I can really just honestly go on and on about how great the CSM program is. 